All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And welcome to episode two of the Robbie Basil Show. I am your host, Robbie Basil. We got a lot of topics to discuss with you today. We have more transfer news around the world of soccer, plus matches to review. We have NBA playoffs, NHL draft lottery. I own a basketball to review, do a little season review, and talk to you about what players they are losing ahead of next season. All that and more. But we're going to begin with, was I right or was I wrong about the games to watch for last week episode? And my Monday one, so what we're going to do is we're going to go over each game briefly uh, and talk to you about why, if I was right or was I wrong about saying this was a game to watch. Uh, we're going to begin with our Monday game, which was Knicks and the Heat. So was I right or was I wrong? I was 100% right. Um, this is a very fun game. Uh, the Heat won game four. Uh, the Knicks did win game five last night. Uh, we'll go more in depth, depth of that in a little bit. But the Heat winning game four, winning both games uh, in Miami was very crucial for them. Then something they needed to do if they really wanted to make a deep run in the playoffs because the Knicks – they're not going to back down. They're not going to go away without a fight. They showed, they showed that last night. I mean, Jimmy Butler had an all right game last night. Like I said, we're going that in depth a little bit more. But, uh, yeah, you know, the Knicks uh, heat game for game four, 100% right. Uh, game number two for the middle of the week on Tuesday. Um, since we're filming this on Thursday, I only said three games, of course. Tuesday, we said Manchester City and Real Madrid as your game to watch for Tuesday. Two for two for me so far, Manchester City and Real Madrid. As we, Like I said, we're going to go more into Champions League games. But right now, early, like looking at it before we go in, in depth with some stats, that game was 100%. That game was crazy. I mean, we just saw two stunner goals. I'll go in more into the depth than that in a minute. But that game, two for two. In game three, I went out in hockey and said Florida and Toronto. Uh, I did say Florida could win this game. Uh, they lost to Toronto. I don't know if I'm not going to give it to myself. I mean, the game was solid, but uh, Florida and Toronto, so I'm two for three, not a bad start for the first time doing this, uh, doing something, a segment like that. But besides all that, we're going to head into our first major topic. We have more transfer news, and we're going to begin from Barcelona again, because, I mean, that's where all the transfer news has been coming from recently. And they are letting go of a former face or big figure from the team that you've seen him on that he's been there for a very long time, but unfortunately he is being let go at the end of the season. That is Spanish international Sergio Busquets from Fabrizio Romano. We heard about this earlier in the week. They officially made the statement that Sergio Busquets will be gone at the end of the season. What does that mean for Barcelona? They're going to try and get younger. And this is something that they needed to do, or they're trying to let go of big wages to try to register players ahead of trying to sign Leo Messi. Um, players to watch for them. I thought um, there was a rumor that uh, Ansu Fati and Ruben Neves swap deal was it possible. That's an interesting idea. I mean, Ruben Neves, on who plays for Wolverhampton Wanderers and the Premier League, he is very, very good. That's all I really need to say about it. He's an exceptional talent and would fit very well with the Barcelona midfield. However... Losing a guy like Ansu Fazi, I don't know if Barcelona really want to do that, uh, losing one of their young talents. But I think if they were to do that, Ansu Fati would be, I think, think would fit very well with Wolves. But uh, there's not, I mean, there's a couple other names to watch out for. Like Fabrizio Romano didn't really mention any uh, major names, but Barcelona is going to need a midfielder. Very interested to see who they go after, or they really just try to develop their young players. Now for Busquets, where will he go? I think there's really only two options for him. Um, Saudi Arabia or MLS? Uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, you you saw what the money they can get out to Leo Messi. Um, I think they're really, really just trying to make it more popular, um, the game of soccer in Saudi Arabia. I mean, their national team is not bad. I mean, they beat Argentina in the World Cup and qualified in a somewhat difficult group, depending on who you ask. But improving the Saudi League, I think, is something that um, – the, they would want to do, the government would want to do over there. And adding a guy like Sergio Busquets would instantly bring up um, like ratings and more views of the league for sure. Um, is there any club in particular? We haven't heard about any specific club, but I mean, Sergio Busquets in Saudi Arabia would be very, very interesting. 
But the other uh, one that I think very much happened is MLS. And I'm talking Inter Miami. Inter Miami would be a very interesting fit for Sergio Busquets. Um, they just, I think they're the only team that like, they're the city. I think that's a perfect city for a guy like Busquets. Um, you remember LA got Gareth Bale, they got Chiellini, um, last season before Bale eventually retired. Um, I think a guy like Busquets heading towards retire. I think he's going to be heading towards retirement within the next year or two, possibly, uh, which would be very sad to see a guy like him go. But I think Sergio Busquets, MLS, I think you could look at Inter Miami. Uh, I don't really know if there's many other clubs that can really afford his wage in general. Um, I do want to eventually see a big time player head to New York uh, for NYCFC or Red Bulls. But right now, I think Inter Miami would probably be the preferred destination over the three of Miami or any of the New York teams. Uh, to continue, uh, the other big transfer news wasn't even a transfer. It was a player re-signing a contract. That is Rafael Leal of AC Milan. Um, he has 12 goals and seven assists in 32 matches this year. Uh, he's His expected goals is actually lower than the goals he's actually scored. Uh, his XG is around nine. Um, but he has been very solid for AC Milan this season, and he has signed a new contract for AC Milan. What, this is, what, is it, what does this mean for them? They're possibly getting the future of the Portuguese national team signed with them long term. And I think it's something that they really wanted to do with the Serie A becoming very competitive. I mean, you have Roma, Inter, Juventus, Napoli winning the league this year, which is very crucial for them. I think that, and of course, you can't mention anything without AC Milan and how big a club they are. So you have those five. It's going to be a dogfight every year with those with those clubs. And having a guy like Rafael Leal on their team at the striker position, I think it's very crucial for them, especially when you're possibly getting the future of the Portuguese national team on your side. I think that's a very good move for them. Uh, Long term, I think this is a good fit. But uh, now we're going to head over to the matches from the Champions League. I feel like it's only right to go over the Champions League matches um, from this week so far. So first up, we have... Man City, Real Madrid ending in a 1-1 draw. I almost predicted the score right, but I did, did predict the result right. I said nil-nil possible, uh, and the final was 1-1. Stellar goals from Vinicius and De Bruyne. Um, so this makes this matchup very interesting, heading to the Etienne. Uh, I think this is a, ma- that's a result that Man City wanted. Um, on the road, a very hard to play, hard, very hard place to play the Santiago Bernabeu. Um, so I think this is a good result for City. I think it's a little bit of a disappointing result, though, for Real Madrid. Um, I think they could have gone um, – I, th- I think they needed to score at least two to really um, like have some like reassurance, I think is the way to put it, uh, about what, to, like, what this tie can look like going forward. I mean, Man City, they aren't going to back down. They have Erling Hall and possibly the best forward in the world. Um, they have other players, De Bruyne, Silva. Jack Grealish, they have talent. Um, don't forget about the defense with Ruben Neves, uh, Ruben Diaz, excuse me. Um, and of course Ederson and Nets. That team is very talented, and we didn't even need half the squad. So I think this is um a very pressure moment, high pressure moment for a team like Real Madrid. I'm interested to see how they respond uh, in leg two. The other game. AC Milan and Inter Milan uh, in the battle at the San Siro. Very interesting game. Uh, you saw Inter score two goals in around three to four minutes with Ed and Dzeko and Henrik Mkhitaryan, the former Arsenal and Man City players. Uh, of course, Dzeko playing for City, Mkhitaryan briefly playing for Arsenal. Uh, very interesting game as well. I mean, and you didn't expect like a high-scoring affair. Neither of these games I thought were going to be a high-scoring affair. Um, Rafael Leal actually not playing that great, but uh, Inter Milan getting a result they need. I mean, they're going to be playing the same venue for both matches. So I think Inter getting a good result against AC Milan to start the tie uh, was something they needed, and they put all the pressure pressure uh, on AC Milan for the second leg. And I posed a question to you guys. Um, I th- I just want to bring this thought up. If AC Milan lose, could they be going for possibly more 
buys in the summer. I think they should. Um, who can they go after? I think Ruben Neves would be a very interesting one. I mean, he's been mentioned around with Barcelona. Um, he's been, I mean, of course, with that move of rumor with Ansu Fatsi, that's swap like you mentioned earlier. But I think AC Milan needs to get a little bit better in order to be a squad like entire. Did they? I'm just trying to look at the lineups real quick. I don't know who if they started Lukaku or not. They didn't, and that was smart. Um, I mean, they have so much. I, mean, I, I think the better team won this match with the 3 5 2. Um, they have Denzel Doom for these, uh, Martinez and Checo out top, Nikitari in the midfield, uh, Bastoni, um, just to name a few. Um, I mean, they have Teo Hernandez on AC Milan, uh, Giroud. I think they need to get younger at forward. They actually didn't start. I actually, where is he? He's not here. So, like, I actually didn't even play. I thought he played on on went on yesterday. Uh, Giroud at center forward. Um, at that 4-2-3-1, high pressing 4-2-3-1. Uh, unfortunate result for AC Milan, but I think they're going to be able to bounce back for sure in their next matchup. Um, next up, we're going to head to the realm of basketball and we're going to talk a little bit NBA playoffs. And I don't think this is right without starting with the New York Knicks, because you already know that Knicks fans were probably going a little bit crazy thinking that they were going to lose. I thought they were going to get absolutely wiped off the floor multiple times. And they, to be fair, they did. But they got the jump job done at MSG. Jimmy Butler only 19 points. Duncan Robinson at 17 and 22 minutes, which, which is actually pretty good for him. But Bam at 18. Max Drews with 14. So he's going crazy in this series. But the Knicks got the job done with, I think, two key contributors. RJ Barrett and Jalen Brunson. Julius Randle at 24, but I think Barrett and Brunson had a better game from the bars that I watched. Uh, down the stretch, they both played very well. Um and I guess and said Knicks are getting the results that they needed, though the Knicks did play two players for 48 minutes. I don't know if that's it, I think two the two that they played were very interesting. Brunson, I'm not shocked about. Quinning Grimes is the one I was interested about. I mean, you're playing a guy 48 minutes, and the one you picked was Quinton Grimes. I don't know if that's the right pick or not, but I mean it worked out for them. Uh, I'm interested to see how many minutes they both play in game six. Um but, yeah, I think the Knicks get the job done. They got the result that they needed. Now they're going to head back to Miami in a situation where you're going to need to go out and win again. And both games they played in Miami, I don't think they looked that great. Um, I, don't, I think that's the best game they've played all series was game five last night. I mean, they didn't look good in game one. They lost. They didn't look, games, look good in game two when they won. And they didn't look good in Miami. So I'm interested to see um, – if they can actually win, go out and win game six on the road. But right now, the Knicks, I don't think are in a very good position. But I still think they could possibly, possibly get the upset win over Miami in game six and force game seven in the Garden, which who knows who's going to win that one. Uh, another game to talk about, uh, Warriors-Lakers. Uh, Warriors went out and won. Uh, another team that survived, survived and just wanted to go out and play another game, game six coming up. I think it might be tomorrow Um, from when this is coming out. But Lakers had LeBron get 25, Anthony Davis 23, um, and other players contribute as well. But the Warriors went out and got 25 from Andrew Wiggins, 27 from Curry, and 20 from Draymond Green. They, I mean, they got the job done as well, similar to the Knicks situation. They got the job done. Um. And this is a game that both of them needed to win. The Warriors got it done. I mean, Steph Curry is that guy. He's been that guy for a long time now. But a double-double from Draymond. Andrew Wiggins stepping up with 25 and 7. So I think it's a result that the Knicks need, that the Warriors needed, excuse me. And they go up ahead to play the, the, the Lakers in game six soon rather than later. Um, game six, by the way, for both of them is tomorrow on Friday at 7.30 and 10. And now a series that um, a follower wanted me to do. Like I shout out to Rome for wanting me to talk a little Suns for you guys. Um, Suns and Nuggets. I was able to watch some of game, um, the previous matchup. And, I mean, the Suns didn't look very good. 
I mean, they have a lot of talent. You want to go over talent? Let me just name some players for you. Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, that's already good enough. I mean, they have Chris Paul as well. You have a little bit of a disappointment with DeAndre Ayton, who hasn't really been able to guard Jokic very well. But, I mean, the depth, I mean, it's been okay, but not contenders worthy. I think that's the main difference with a team like this. Can you trade it off some good contributors to the Nets in that trade for Kevin Durant? So I don't know, like we're going to really see in, in game six um, if that deal pans out, because if they lose that game, that it's an automatic L. I think it's a, almost a clear L for the Suns because you go all in, get Kevin Durant, and he isn't able to contribute. I mean, you aren't able to get to the finals. I mean, you saw an instant stands. Both of the other two, Colin and Chris, thought the Suns were going to the finals, and I said the Nuggets were going to win this series. So I think the Nuggets have looked better. I mean, they have – I think it's a two-man squad with Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic, but Bruce Brown at 25 um, in the previous matchup. So I think the Nuggets look good in this series. Again, um, the Suns are in a must-win situation. Um, do I think they get it done game six? I do. Um, I think they win game six. Uh, tonight, which is they're going to be on my one of my my game to watch tonight. I think. Um, I mean they are in a not the worst situation in the world. Um, I do think though the Suns have a very good chance of winning Game Six in Phoenix tonight. Uh, to force Game Seven on Mother's Day, which would be a very interesting Game Seven on Mother's Day. But don't be surprised if the Suns come out flat again. I mean, I don't, I didn't really like the start that the Suns had in game five. In, in games, yeah, in game five. Um, I didn't really like the start that they had. Um, but they looked a little bit flat. They forced up to do any shots. Nuggets just had some, some better shots in the beginning. So I like the situation where the Nuggets are at. Um, Suns, they need to win the game. I do think they win the game this next game. So eventually in this series, I do think the Suns lose in seven games. Moving on. To the other game to watch out for, and that is the Celtics and the Sixers. Uh, was looking at some numbers for you guys. By the way, starting in the next episode, you will see some like stats on the screen. I'm just using a new uh, editing software, so uh, you will see some stats on the bottom or over the front most of the screen. Don't worry, I know I got criticized for that last time. Don't worry, the edits are coming. It'll just be in the next episode. Um, we'll look at this game right here. The Sixers had 33 from Embiid, 30 from Tyrese. I believe it's 30 from Tyrese Maxey. It is, and se only 17 points from Harden. So Tyrese Maxey really stepped up in, in the previous matchup. And I think that's something the Celtics weren't expecting. They got 36 from Tatum, 24 from Jalen Brown, and 14 from Marcus Smart. I think the depth needs to contribute more if they want to win this game tonight. Uh, I do think the Celtics win tonight. They get their revenge. But don't be surprised if Philly wins this game either. I mean, right now, the, the, the 76ers have the momentum. They're going to play in Philadelphia. But I still think the Celtics can have the, de have the team, the star power, to possibly go out and beat the Sixers. But I think the Celtics do win this game. Uh, they have the talent, like I've mentioned, but don't be surprised if the six should come out firing on all cylinders tonight for sure. Uh, my prediction to her tonight is uh, the Celtics do win uh, by about only five or six points. Tatum goes off again, but they're going to need someone like Smart or Brown to contribute more in order to really get the momentum going in their favor. We're going to move on to our next topic. And we're going to talk a little bit about Iona basketball. Now, Iona basketball, quick review. Uh, they made March Madness. I was able to go. A phenomenal experience. They went out and lost to the national champion, UConn Huskies. And Rick Pitino left a little bit after the tournament. And then the de the squad left, left with him. But I just want to mention some pieces that Iona did lose and what some of these teams are getting. I'm going to talk about three players today. My first one, actually a good friend of mine, I'd like to consider him a good friend of mine, is Danis Jenkins. He is that guy. I will tell you again, St. John's fans, he is that guy. Um, a junior, this year he's going to be a junior, next year he's going to be a senior from Dallas, Texas. 
played Juco the two years before. This year at 15 and a half points in 35 games with five rebound, four, four and a half rebounds and five assists. Uh, loves to get steals, a true three level score. He can take it to the basket. He's a great pull up mid range game and he can shoot the three pretty well. I mean, he shot 36% from three and that's pretty solid for a guy, his position. Uh, I think, and he's also very good defensively. I think he's a phenomenal player. Really works well with the Rick Pitino system. Uh, St. John's is getting an absolute stud and a great character off the, off the floor as well. He's very, um, I mean, he loves just talking to people on campus. I mean, I've seen it all year long. Danis Jenkins is truly the perfect fit for Rick Pitino's system. And he's exactly uh, the type of guy that St. John's is excited to get. St. John's, like I said, you're getting a stud. Player number two, Walter Clayton Jr., who will be heading to the University of Florida from Lake. He's he's from Lake Wales. Uh, so the move, when we are all looking at the possible transfer news, this one made the most sense. And like he said in his um, video saying he's going to Florida, he is coming home. Uh, from get The kid from Lake Wales, 16.8 points per game, leading the team in scoring. 4.3 rebounds, 3.2 assists, shooting the ball well. He w- looked great in the beginning of the March of the March Madness game, along with Barrick, John, Luis. Um, six, like he said, 16.8 points per game, up from his 7.3 points per game in his freshman season. The guy, I believe, has led the country in free throw shooting, which is kind of which is kind of nice. Putting us, I own a little bit on the map here, but um. You want to talk about a guy who has the passion and can really ignite any squad? This is him for sure. Uh, 1.8 steals per game. Uh, he did foul a lot, but he cut down the fouls a little bit down the stretch. Uh, I think he was a big piece of him and Danish Jenkins were the two big pieces on why Iona was so successful this season. Um, I mean, that duo was great. I mean, if you watched any Iona game, I think of the exception of like one. Those two, either one or both of them, went crazy. And that's just the way this team was. Uh, but Walter Clayton Jr., I think he's a phenomenal three-point scorer. He could shoot it from anywhere. And when I mean anywhere, I mean anywhere. Um, and Florida is getting a guy who can really rejuvenate that program for sure, heading to the SEC. Um, it's sad to see him go as well. I think he was uh, the top two. Uh, Walt and DJ were best players. It's sad to see both of them go, but I'm intrigued to see what Tobin Anderson brings in. By the way, over the summer, I'll do the video, like I'll do a segment talking about who Iona has brought in. Uh, we just don't know the full list yet, so that's why I'm doing the players out first. The other guy I want to talk about, the man from Benin City, Nigeria. We got Nelly Jr. Joseph in the post. Uh, 14.9 points per game, 9.3 rebounds, and 1.1 assists on 55% shooting. Not a bad season for Nelly. Uh, he didn't look good, not that great in March Madness. But when he ha- when he's on, I'll tell you, he gets on very quickly. Uh, he sh- shot well from the field, 55%. It's actually his second highest in his career Um, from the 59.6% in this freshman season. Uh, he had a solid year getting more steals, but he, he's cutting down the fouls a little bit from his freshman year more. Uh, had only 1.9 turnovers, which is down, um, which is good. Um, he didn't get that many blocks this year, but he rebounded the best this season. Now, that's why I think Iona really liked him. It was his physicality. He did. I mean, he had the guard Sonogo in the tournament. I mean, that's a hard enough matchup in the first place, but New, New Mexico is getting a very good prospect. Um, the Lobos, I, th- I think you should be very excited for a guy like Nelly Jr. Joseph. Uh, great personality. Um, I think he's going to really succeed down there in on in the western side of the country. I think he's going to fit very well over there. Uh, don't be surprised if he's one of the best players in that conference next season. But Iona as a whole, the MAC lost a lot of talent this year, but you didn't really realize it. Um I think Iona, with the early pickups that they've made, uh, I think they are contenders once again. I mean, I've talked with other guys from the ESP since I work with ESPN. I've talked with other uh, guys around the production crew. They think Iona, with the talent they've brought in so far, I I think we all agree that Iona can contend again under Tobin Anderson. Now, will they get as high of a seed as last year? Probably not. I mean, fourteen or fifteen, probably the right about seed. 
unless they go absolutely crazy. But I think Iona likely will win the MAC again for the talent that's being lost from the conference this season. Like I said, they had a lot of talent. I think multiple teams could have won the conference, but Iona came out on top. Very happy for me, for me, for someone who's watched this team all year long behind the camera or in the stands. Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch them, and best of luck to those guys. So they had to have a whole new squad coming in. So best, best of luck to those guys in the future. Okay. So we're going to move on with the NHL draft lottery. Now, the draft lottery, um, this year, the order is in. It was, I believe, it was only a day or two ago. But here are the results. Uh, the Blackhawks won the lottery, so they're going to get probably get Connor Bedard, who I think is absolutely nuts. Uh, then it's the Ducks, Jackets, Sharks, Canadians, Coyotes, Flyers, Capitals, Red Wings, Blues, Canucks, Coyotes again from the Senators, Buffalo, who aren't towards the bottom this year. I think they had a very good year, by the way. Uh, Pittsburgh, Nashville, and Calgary. Now, for context, looking down this order, the top seat projection was at top uh team like the worst team in the league was Anaheim. They got the second pick. This is the first time uh in a couple of years that the team with the best odds didn't get the first pick. Uh just look at like the last two uh top teams with the best odds won the first pick, which was Montreal in 2022, which they selected uh Slavkovsky. And 2021 with Buffalo when they selected Owen Power. Uh, remember in 2020, uh, the Rangers won both lotteries, which is kind of funny, uh, to get uh, Lafreniere. Uh, New Jersey got it the year before getting Jack Hughes. And Buffalo actually won it by themselves, uh, getting Rasmus Dahlin. So it's interesting. I don't like uh, Chicago winning it. I heard people think it's rigged, because what has happened with Chicago. Uh, the Blackhawks winning the lottery really changes their entire organization. Uh, reason being... They've had that scandal back in 2021. Uh, they've had a lot of negativity around this squad about how good they actually were and uh, how some of the team was was ran. Um, and I think right now with uh, winning this lottery, I think really changes their whole organization. Um, and they've traded some pieces before. Uh, getting a guy, they do select Connor Bedard. Uh, will absolutely change their entire franchise, and he is their franchise guy. And you've seen the stats from him. You've seen the highlight reels. This kid is crazy. He's very, very good. and He's going to absolutely rejuvenate that Chicago Blackhawks team that I, that's unfortunately lost one of their key contributors. is Jonathan Taines, I believe, is not coming back to the Blackhawks. I believe he's going to be heading towards retirement. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but Jonathan Taines, I believe, did play his last game as a Blackhawk uh, a couple weeks ago, which is sad to see. I mean, him and, and uh, Patrick Kane were those two key contributors from the Stanley Cup winning Stanley Cup winning teams. I think that uh, the way the Blackhawks are now are, I mean, they're trying to. They're, I mean, Stan Bowman when he was still GM said they're heading towards a rebuild, and no one really liked that. But the way they, they are right now, the Blackhawks, I think getting the first pick, getting Bedard, uh, will instantly rejuvenate this whole organization. Kind of like the impact that Jack Hughes has uh, with the Devils. I think it's the best comparison that you can have right now. So Blackhawks win the lottery. Uh, and I'll repeat the order one more time. It's going to be the Blackhawks with the first selection. Then it's falling down the order. It's Ducks, Jackets, Sharks, Canadians. Coyotes, Flyers, Capitals, Red Wings, Blues, Coyotes, sorry, Canucks, then Coyotes from Ottawa, Sabres, Penguins, Predators, and Calgary. The next topic I want to talk about, um, we've gone through most of the main stuff today. So I just want to talk about some early NFL schedule reactions. Uh, next week, um, we're actually going to do some major championship golf. Uh, with the PGA being next week and what to expect from there, as well as a full breakdown of the NFL schedule release. So you guys do not want to miss that one. Uh, make sure uh, to subscribe so you don't – and turn on post notifications so you don't miss an upload. But uh, an early NFL schedule thoughts. Uh, some of the games that came out were the international games. Uh, I just have to say this now. I just need to get this off my chest now. 
How the heck did Jacksonville get away from playing Buffalo on the road? It is annoying how easy Buffalo's schedule is. I mean, on, especially their road schedule. Their home schedule kind of a kind of annoying. They got some contenders. Their road schedule is a cakewalk, and they play uh, multiple games in London. They play the Falcons and then Buffalo in London. They get away with it. It's annoying. Uh, how much they've gotten away with this. Uh, It is unfortunate, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Jacksonville, I think, wins the AFC South now when I do the full season prediction uh, in a couple of months. But right now, uh, Jacksonville is in a prime spot to possibly go undefeated on the road this year. It's very, very possible. And it's annoying as a fan of the league to see Jacksonville possibly go undefeated on the road, but... At the end of the day, um, yeah, that's just how the schedule came out. Other games to watch out for uh, from the games that have been released so far, Dolphins, Chiefs, oh, is another one. I believe that's in uh, international as well. Yep, that one is in Germany. Um, that'll be a fun matchup for sure. Uh, the Dolphins and Chiefs, I mean, you wish Tyree Hill played that redemption game in KC, but uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, they scheduled it for Germany, which is odd. Uh, other games to watch out for. Um, other games released today. They released uh, some games this today. Uh, Chiefs Lions being the Thursday night game. I don't like this at all. Uh, I I don't know really what the Chiefs had opponents wise. Detroit. Last time they played a prime time game on Week One, if I'm not mistaken, they got ran off the field by the Jets, uh, which was on a Monday, not a Thursday. But we'll see if there's a difference. Uh, I remember Sam Darnold that one game against the Lions. That's probably the best game he's had in his whole career. Fun fact. But um, looking uh, at the, some other games, the other game I want to talk about, uh, Jets-Bills being week one on Monday. I, d- I mean, I don't know. It's a primetime game. They're for, they're like a, it's a really good primetime game. But I don't know if Monday Night Football for the Aaron Rodgers debut is the right call. I thought a 425 star would have been better. Um. But right now, I mean, getting to watch a Monday night football game to start the year for the first time since that infamous Lions win with Sam Darnold. I mean, I don't know what to think about it. But right now, um, it's going to be a great game. Jets, Buffalo, all most of them have been good. I mean, you remember the game at home for us last year? Uh, we went out and beat Buffalo thinking we were contenders. Then we realized we weren't. Um, then we traded for Aaron Rodgers. I don't know. I, I still think we can pot, probably lose, but uh, we'll see. I mean, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, I don't want – what I don't want – this is just a quick Jets PSA. I don't want people to overreact thinking the Jets are really, really good because Aaron Rodgers is here. They play one of the hardest schedules in the NFL once again, and it's frustrating. But, I mean, the teams they play – um. The no game is really going to be a true pushover for the Jets, and it's annoying. I mean, some people can argue the Falcons; they're not going to go away easily. Even though I think their defensive line will will kill on them in the trench in the trenches. Um, but I think the Jets will probably should win that game. But no game they're going to have is going to be a total blowout this year. I don't think so. Um, even with Rodgers at quarterback, but we're just, it's just really a wait and see game. Um, I don't think they imp- improved at the linebacker position. I think they got worse at safety. And that's something I think that I've gone over this on Into the Stands multiple times, that the Jets needed to improve these areas in order to be seen as true contenders. They didn't. They went really for what Rodgers wanted, which is annoying. But at the end of the day, I think the Jets, I mean, with those holes last year, they still got seven wins, which I predicted um, in another way uh, before. So, Right now, I think the Jets is, fans just need to relax. Uh, hopefully, everyone stays healthy during training camp and the preseason. And that's just all you really can hope for right now is the Jets uh, figure it out and get the job and everyone stays healthy. Nothing stupid happens during the offseason. And we can just ride healthy into the, into the season, hopefully beat Buffalo, try and beat Buffalo uh, week one. So at the time we have left, uh, there wasn't as many topics to talk about today. Uh, we're going to do our games of the weekend. Uh, since we're posting this on Thursday, I'm talking to you games about Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we'll kick it off um, with Thursday. And there were choices. 
there were definitely choices. And we're going to talk about games in the four sports today. Yes, four for four. Um, The first one is tonight, and I'm going to do the NBA. And I think this series is better than the other one. I'm going with Suns Nuggets to watch for tonight. I think the Celtics are going to bounce back easily. Not, not easily, but I think the Celtics bounce back. This is, game is more unpredictable because you. Ha- I don't know really what we need to see from the Suns in order for them to beat the Nuggets. But if they can, I mean, Nikola Jokic has played very well in this series. Kevin Durant, I think, needs to step up more. The Death needs to step up more. I think the Phoenix Suns are going to. Tra- they're going to be very competitive. I think the Suns do find a way to win this, but it'll be very, very close till the end. Uh, the Suns, they have a good enough team starting lineup. It's just going to like ask the questions, is death really needed? And I think they're going to see a harsh reality probably on Mother's Day in Game 7, if they get to Game 7. Second game to watch out for, I'm going to go more uh, in the NHL realm uh, for tomorrow. And I'm going to go with Oilers Golden Knights game five. Now, the reason I didn't pick um, Florida Toronto again, because I think Florida is going to win that game in Toronto, um, unless Toronto really wants to make this a series, which I think is very possible. But Oilers Golden Knights, you have the big three of McDavid, Dry Seidel, and the news, Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Uh, You have other pieces that have tried to contribute, but very similar to the Suns, they're very top heavy, um, really with only a few big time players. But the depth is tried to show, and it's somewhat showed, but I don't know if Edmonton can get all the way. Though I do think Edmonton can scrape away a win in that, in that game against Vegas, but it'll be a very tight one to the end. That whole series is going to be very tight to the end. Uh, next game to watch out for is in the Premier League on Saturday. This game is at – sorry, correction, we're doing baseball, not soccer yet. Baseball is next. Now I'm just going to go over a series for you guys. I'm going series-wise, instead of one singular game, how good this series is going to be, Dodgers-Padres. Dodgers-Padres is my series to watch out for this weekend for baseball. When the Dodgers and the Padres, two loaded squads, top two in the NL West, they're both good enough to make the playoffs, and I think this is a very star-loaded matchup. There's really not another series that wows me or should wow anyone throughout the weekend. I mean, some other contenders talk about Braves, Blue Jays, is a possible series to watch. Pirates, Orioles, I feel like could be good as well. I mean, the Pirates have played uh, oddly well to start their season. But uh, I think right now that series to watch out for is Padres and the Dodgers. Um, the, the best series of the weekend, and I think they that will produce three very solid contests. And the final one for Mother's Day. Um, we're going to go to the team that will probably be wearing pink jerseys on Sunday. I'm doing in the Premier League. I almost said it was on Saturday, but it's a Sunday matchup at 11.30 a.m. We have Arsenal playing Brighton. This will really try to boost their title hopes. Brighton competing for a, Euro- for a European spot in the Conference League or the Europa League this year. Uh, I don't think many people were really paying attention to that, but the Seagulls are really are in the mix. They're only... Uh, two points out of sixth position. They are seven points out of out of Liverpool, but they have two matches at hand of Liverpool. And you look at Brighton's remaining schedule. I just want to quickly talk about the Seagulls. Uh, their remaining matchups. They have new. They have a very tough remaining schedule. But if they can win the matches that they need to win, which could be Southampton, Newcastle, and Aston Villa, and Liverpool don't can't find a way to get a result, you could possibly be see Brighton in fifth. It's possible. But they are playing my boys at Arsenal. Uh, I think this matchup ends 2-1 to Arsenal. I think Arsenal does go behind early again. Uh, but Martinelli I th- and Saka, I think, score. And I think Arsenal will win this matchup. So to recap, for the games to watch for this week, we have in the NBA Suns Nuggets tonight. For Friday, we have the NHL playoffs with Edmonton in Vegas, which my prediction to win that game is Vegas does win that game. High scoring affair again, but I think Vegas does barely pull it out. But I think Edmonton does win game six, and then Gagging Series does go to a game seven. Uh, Saturday, I just went with the series for the weekend to watch out for it with the Padres and the Dodgers. And then in the Premier League on Mother's Day, we have Arsenal beating Brighton as the game to watch on Sunday.
unfortunately, that is the time all the time that I have for you guys this week. Uh, thank you guys for watching episodes one and two so far. Coming up on Monday, like I mentioned, PGA Championship preview and NFL schedule recap. That's going to be a lot of fun to talk about. But for everyone, I'm Robbie Basil. We'll see you guys on Monday. Make sure to like and subscribe and turn on post notifications. And leave a comment if you want. Comment below if you want to see another topic, uh, another sport to watch out for next week. But for all, that's all of our time. We'll see you guys next time.